Hey guys, Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today I've got a an overview or first impressions on the Real Steel G3 Puko. I'm going to take a little more time than I normally would with a first impressions video on this just because there's not much out there and so for those of you who are looking for a little more information I'm going to try to provide that. Um, I won't be able to tell you everything just because I haven't had a lot of use on this yet but uh, if you have questions before the full review comes out go ahead and, and comment on this and I'll try to get answers for you uh, as best as I can. Uh, first off the packaging is the typical real steel box and I will say I do like the packaging they do with some foam and a little insert so uh, <clears throat> there's not a lot of what would you say 40 to 50 dollar knives and I'm gonna and I'm guessing at that price point a little uh, but a lot of times for that price point you're not gonna get the cloth and the packaging and stuff that these come with so I will give them credit for that also I really like the little inserts that they do that are specific to the knife I think that's a, a nice touch uh, spider co as well sometimes does that kind of thing and I do prefer that over you know the typical marketing brochure that you get with a lot of knives um, <clears throat> the designer on this knife is a guy that I haven't heard too much about, although I did look him up and, and uh, check out some of his designs. Um, he's got a G1 and a G2 uh, custom, uh, and they are sort of, you know, minimalist, slimmed down, Quaken style folders that are actually really cool looking. Uh, and so this isn't a huge departure for him, although this one's maybe a little more angular and textured and got a little more detail happening than some of his other designs. Uh, but yeah, great looking knife, uh, and that's one of the things that drew me to it. One other thing by way of introduction, and that is the way this knife came to me. Um, I contacted Real Steel about getting some knives from them, and uh, they came back with a couple of suggestions, including this one. And since I'd seen this on Instagram, you know, a couple weeks before, uh, talking with them, I said, yeah, go ahead and, and include that in my order. By the way, they were not given to me for free. I did have to pay something, but uh, it was just, uh, they, they made it a little more affordable for me. So that is appreciated. <clears throat> So let's get this cloth out of the way as soon as I use it. I will say this blade is a bit of a fingerprint magnet, so I will clean it off a little. And now we'll get into more of the specs on the knife. So overall, this is 8 and 3 16 inches, 3 and a half inch blade, 4 and 3 16 handle, or I mean uh, 4 and 5 eighths handle. Uh, <clears throat> the weight on this is 4.56 ounces, which is pretty hefty for a knife of this size, uh, but they, they have at least made an effort to lighten this up. You can see some pretty aggressive milling in there, and that is appreciated. And, and you know, at really at four and a half ounces, that's not the end of the world in terms of, you know, a knife that's carryable and comfortable to have in your pocket. By the way, this is fairly slim at only about three eighths of an inch thick. So carries around pretty nicely. The only, what would you say, the only limitation I would put on this would be, you know, if you're wearing like a thin pair of workout shorts or track pants or something, yeah, it's gonna feel pretty heavy in that. But any other method, you know, if you're wearing, you know, cargo pants or dress pants or jeans or anything like that, it's gonna be completely fine and very, very comfortable. So I have carried this a fair bit in the few days that I've had it and uh, will say, yeah, it's, it's a nice knife to carry around. Now, moving on to some of the more interesting features, let's start off with this blade, which is a drop point satin finish 14C28N blade. And I really, really like that blade steel. Uh, in terms of budget steels, I would pretty well say it's the best one. It's, you know, it's, it's considerably cheaper, but comparable in performance to VG10 or even 154CM when it's properly heat treated. Uh, <clears throat> And in fact, I have had knives where I kind of did some side-by-side -side testing where 14C28N outperformed VG10. Uh, that's not going to be true across the board because it depends a lot on how those steels are, tr are heat treated. Anyway, uh, that's the blade steel. Uh, the grind is a compound grind, both flat grounds. So you have a full flat grind here at the tip and then a partial flat grind at the base of the blade there. 
uh, real steel bannering and over here is the name of the knife. Now let me say that the, the compound grind, it looks kind of cool, but that's about all it does. Primarily it is an aesthetic feature. It's not really affecting the performance of this blade a whole lot. And I will say in the cutting tasks I've done so far, mostly I've been using the full flat ground portion because, you know, I was, you know, if you're cutting up some fruit or whatever, that's, you know, you're mostly doing your work out here. So uh, the, the thicker grind at the base, uh, there's, you know, there's not a huge utility kind of purpose to it, but it does look really cool. And so that's fine. Uh, no complaint here. I actually do like the way that it, it adds a bit of complexity uh, to the overall design of the knife. Now there may be some that don't like that and that's okay. This knife is also available with a Scandi grind and in the Scandi grind uh, of course you don't have a compound grind. It's it's saber ground. So uh, <clears throat> that's the blade. Let's move on to the the pivot and the lock and the handle. So um, one thing I will have to say about this is for its price uh, and really even for just in general the action on this knife is superb. Uh, probably in terms of a, a more budget friendly or more affordable knife, about the best action I've seen. Previous to this, I would have said it was the CRKT Fossil, uh, but this is even better than the Fossil by a significant margin. It flips extremely, extremely well. Uh, even if I don't push it that hard, now I'm gonna try to put a little pressure on the lock bar. Yeah, it's still, um, it's pretty hard to not get this to flip right. I, I don't, I'm trying to fail here. Maybe I can do it. One more time. There we go. So you can get it to fail, but man, this is very, very smooth. Uh, and the fact that it drops closed under its own weight is impressive because of the fact that this is a really, really light blade. So there's not a lot of material there to, to sort of pull that knife closed. And there it is in the closed position. You can see the blade is completely gone, which again is a pretty neat little feature there. <clears throat> now, in terms of lockup, it is a frame lock and uh, the relief cut is maybe a little more aggressive than I'd like, but it is comfortable to actuate, so I guess that's the trade-off you get. Uh, <clears throat> lockup is very solid and yeah, this is a ball bearing pivot. Uh, very, very, very smooth. It really hard to hard to believe that this knife is, you know, and I'm guessing a little bit here, these aren't at retailers, but I'm gonna guess this is a $45 knife and the the action is just superb beyond anything at that price point and probably beyond most $200 knives. It's very, very good. Uh, let's see, talk about the handle a little bit. And the handle here is really, really good. Uh, I don't know, there you go, you can kind of see it now. There is this really nice milled texturing in the stainless steel that is awesome. I've had some stainless steel knives before and I've reviewed them here and complained about uh, the fact that sometimes they are too, too slippery. This has a really nice texturing to it that uh, makes the knife feel great in hand and also makes it so that, you know, at no time, I've had other stainless steel knives where you kind of have to be, man, I gotta be a little bit careful when I'm using this to make sure it, it doesn't, I don't drop it or it doesn't slip out of my hand. Not so with this, it's really, really nice. Uh, by the way, all the edges are cleaned up so there's no sharp edges anywhere. Uh, and the milling or the machining that's done on this handle is fairly extensive and it's all really, really nice. And I'm sure that does contribute to the price point. You know, this is not gonna be um, the, the $30 stainless steel frame lock that we see a lot of, but it, it is still gonna be reasonably priced and, and it's really, really well done for uh, its price point. Um, I will show you that milling one more time. We'll see if I can give you a good look from this side. There you go. See the, the heavily milled out handle scales. And another thing that I really like is the, the two positions. So it's just um, pillar back here and then of course the, the, the pivot screw up here that holds the knife together. That's really, really nice. I really like the way it, it finishes the knife where you've just got the two matching uh, screws there. Uh, both very, very attractive, nicely polished, and contrast well with the, the finish on the handle. So, last thing to say about this handle is about the pocket clip. Uh, and that clip, it's a spring clip, single position, right? There's no, there's no space for it here. What they've done is they've milled out the handle so this drops into it and that's what keeps it secure. And it is very secure. Uh, a little bit tight when I first uh, started pocketing this, 
but uh, if you force it into, you know, I, I wear 5.11s a lot and where they have those reinforced pockets, uh, those reinforcements tend to, to loosen off clips. And so they've, they've loosened this one off a little bit and it's quite nice now. Uh, so yeah, it did come a little bit tight and in the first time I, I pocketed this, uh, I had a bit of a tough time getting it out, but now it goes in and out of pocket, no problem. So there you go, guys. That's sort of my initial take on the Real Steel G3 Puko. Very, very well done. Uh, comfortable in hand, nice size, uh, acceptable weight. In fact, you know, for a stainless steel frame lock, the weight is quite good. Uh, and I really do like the design. Now, there may be some of you out there who would prefer the Scandi Grind, whichever one you go with. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Uh, the one standout feature on this has got to be that action. When I'm carrying this, uh, I talked about it being in pocket, but boy, I rarely have this in my pocket because I'm literally just flipping it over and over again when I'm, you know, when I'm driving in the car, walking around or at work, whatever. Uh, this is a knife that has one of the nicest actions that I have seen. Uh, not only for its price point, but just in general. So there you go, guys. That's my initial take on the G3 Puko. Look forward to the full review later on. And if you like this kind of stuff, and if you like Real Steel, I've got a few more reviews of Real Steel knives coming up. So go ahead and hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. We'll talk to you soon.